We're thundering towards the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship. This is the Moto America Superbikes at Road America for our fourth round of nine for 2024 for Mission King of the Baggers here in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin from the famed Road America Circuit. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast. I'm Greg White, standing alongside two-time national champ Jason Pridmore. Now, Jason, here we are. We're coming close to the mid part of the season, but this Mission King of the Baggers has come down to two racers this season. Yeah, it has. Kyle Wyman shows up at Daytona, does the double, but he's got a strong challenger in three-time Superbike champion from Australia, Troy Herfoss. So Troy's come in, Greg, has won races, done really well. And really, the difference so far in this championship is that one wet-to-dry race that we had at Road Atlanta. And this is a massively important race for Kyle Wyman because this is Harley Davidson's home racetrack. They're just an hour down the street in Milwaukee and they like nothing more than to come here and win this race. Here's the way the season shaped up. So Kyle comes out of the gate, like you said, he wins. Then Troy gets Coda one, and then Kyle gets Coda two. But Jason, it's Road Atlanta race number two in the rain where Kyle is getting fifth place, and that has been the big difference in the points championship. Let's take a look at where they stand. So Troy has 135, and Kyle is only nine points behind, and that is the difference between the extra second place Troy had and the fifth place that Kyle Wyman had. But Jason, this racetrack is phenomenal. It's one of the best. Take a look at it. It is the best track in the country, in my opinion, Greg, and a lot of racers' opinions. Long run down to turn one. When you get down to turn three, now you got to decide to draft, not draft, but down into turn five, got to put yourself in a good spot on this opening lap. Threw down all the way into the carousel, Greg. Turns nine and ten into that tight chicane that was built hill some years ago for bikes. Down into the famous Canada corner, turn 12, and from there, this is where the race strategy plays out. You're going back uphill through fast turn 13 into 14. Do you Want to draft your way to the front or do you have a big enough gap where you think you can hold off to that finish line ah road america is fantastic let's take a look at a more intimate look on our insta 360 track lap this is james rispoli who's wearing this thing and jay the thing that's impressive about road america they have something called four miles of fitness if you think this track is untouchable you can't get on it if you're a local you can come here mondays or wednesdays for two hours from 6 to 8 p.m walk it run it or pedal your bicycle and it's only five bucks but here we go, race action coming up after this. Starting grid on a wet racetrack for Mission King of the Baggers. Race number one is Kyle Wyman, Troy Horfoss, and Tyler O'Hara. With Gillum, Rispoli, and Flinders, although Gillum's bike didn't look like it made it back around. Landers, West, Jake Lewis, Travis Wyman, and Bobby Fong on row four. So the riders have had a chance to see this track in these conditions. As you can see on the asphalt that the rain is still falling and there are some big areas here where the bikes sit on top of the water and spin, spin. But these 620 pound plus motorcycles are gonna give you the best traction that you can get on these Dunlop full wet tires. This race scheduled for five laps. Mission King of the Baggers. When the red light's off, we're going. Here we go. Kyle Wyman with a good launch, but it's Troy Herfoss on the Indian factory bike who gets a good launch, but who's going to break? Look at James Rispoli on that special livery on the factory Harley Davidson going into turn number one in second place. So Hog Spoli trying to chase down the Indian on this so important race here for the company. Same two guys we saw at the front of the Mission King of the Baggers challenge race earlier. Herfoss and Rispoli came across the line, you know, a bike length apart pretty much, Greg. So they're both gonna be very comfortable in these conditions as you see Kyle Wyman there in third. Her, um, Tyler O'Hara there in fourth. And it's true, Greg, I didn't see Hayden Gillum, our defending national champion, had a big crash in the challenge race earlier on. Banson Hines team did a good job of getting that bike back together, but he didn't make it around after the warm-up lap. So let's get back to the racing at the front. These two guys, since the last time they were on the track, Greg, I will say this, the track's got a lot wetter. Um, there's probably gonna be a lot more standing water. And uh, just recently, I watched Troy Herfoss do a rain race in, in uh, Australian Superbike on the Ducati that he rides over there. Um, and uh, yeah, they were racing at night in the rain. So the track wow. was all lit up, so I got to watch him do that. So he's not going to be afraid of what he's being faced with today. This is one of the few tracks that Troy Herfoss had seen 
uh, maybe the only track that he had seen coming over to America. And you can look how comfortable he is, Greg. He's already starting to stretch it out ever so slightly over Raspoli, who's stretching it out just a little bit over Wyman. And I believe that's Bobby Fong, who just came off the superbike right now, literally just got off the superbike and came straight out onto the grid for this Mission King of the Baggers running fourth. So he's going to have a little bit of knowledge as the number 50 of exactly what to expect in these conditions as Raspoli has closed that lead down a lot from the carousel down through that chicane. So Herb Foss from Australia, SNS Indian Motorcycle Machine. That's the Indian Challenger. And then the battle of Harley Davidson Factory racing on that road glide is James Raspoli. And Raspoli, as the motorcycle's getting a little bit sideways, mm. and Raspoli sends it twitching, so he's going to lose a couple of bike lengths on his charge forward. But he's able to gather it back up is the number 43. But Jay, you're right. So we're about four hours now of steady rain. Yeah. And, and it really just had started when that challenge race happened earlier in the day. So there's quite a bit of more of the rain on the surface. And it definitely has changed the characteristic of Road America. Yeah, it definitely does. And, you know, well, like we have have talked about so many times the resurfacing of this track a year ago was absolutely spectacular uh, but now we're starting to see a couple of things like down through Canada corner or going on the run down to Canada corner into turn five there's a couple spots that maybe weren't as bad in the past in the sense of grip goes in the in the rain and uh, but I mean look Greg this track it's phenomenal um, but it's just it's it's just very very wet after four hours you'd expect nothing less than to have some puddling uh, or some even aquaplaning from these bikes. Herfoss right now is just rolling. And you can see James doing the same, getting a little bit out of shape there. Um, on the exit of turn three, there's a little bit of a puddle there that we've seen a few other classes of riders hit there. So Herfoss looks pretty comfortable, doesn't he? Yeah, and you can see obviously four hours for our camera, but Troy Herfoss leading the way. Hey, betting is now available for Moto America fans. Go to nxtbets.com slash play MA. For more information, go visit MotoAmerica.com. So for her, Foss, Jason, you're saying he's been here before, and obviously from the time he was here to where it is right now, is there's, there's quite a few changes that have been made to this racetrack over the years, and all of them have been absolutely positive, including the resurfacing that took place in the winter of 2022. And it is shown to be an outstanding repave of course, polymer modified as well, provides plenty of grip. So the question is, as in the dry with Dunlop, as they bring kind of softer and softer compound tires over the next couple of years, where's the grip level gonna be? We know we saw in the dry earlier today in qualifying before this skies opened up, we saw a track record fall with Cameron Bobier in the Steel Commander Superbike class. But in terms of in the rain, Jay, looking at it, I mean, you're well shielded from the rain. You're still getting wet. It's cold. Yep. Hannah has told us that it's 60 degrees out there. And of yeah, course, it's, and it's coming down just as hard as we've seen it, isn't it, right now? I mean, this certainly is as is. hard as we've seen it come down. So it was supposed to lighten up as the day wore on. And it's actually done the opposite. It's, it's raining harder right now because you can really see it coming off the track. And I mean, what do you think about the factory Harley's paint jobs this weekend? They look amazing with this special livery that they've wheeled out for their home race just awesome. Raspoli is definitely popped in something different. Of course, you know, your orange and black is just traditional. Absolutely. Yep. And it's beautiful. But looking at this bike, absolutely love it for Raspoli. And he's doing everything he can. Keep in mind with this Mission King of the Baggers category, no electronic riding aids, meaning no track control, no wheeling control, no launch control. So everything that's being done in these wet conditions on these Dunlop full rain tires is being done with the right wrist and the breaking fingers and foot for these riders. Kyle Wyman keeping it a little bit closer. And the challenge race earlier, he fell back. And I sometimes think in those challenge races is we've got a huge battle for fourth that maybe we'll get a look at here in a minute. But the rest of the field is battling for fourth. Our top three guys have kind of gotten away. Kyle Wyman here doing a good job keeping his teammate in front of him a little bit further, uh, a little bit closer. In the challenge race, Kyle fell back a little bit. But I kind of was thinking that maybe when you know that you're not going to win the race, those challenge races are all about one thing, and that's money. Hannah. 
Talking about James Rispoli, you know, he's really settling into that HE Factory team really well, but he came into this weekend with the mentality that he needs to find something. They need to make another step forward. And despite the conditions, he kind of applied that same mentality to the rain. So they're really comfortable with the setup as far as that goes. But talking a little bit more about, talking a little bit more just about everything with him and this rain setup. Guys. Yeah. Thanks, Hannah. Yeah, I mean, that's the that's the big deal is how much rain time do you have, Jay? I mean, these bikes are constantly, constantly being developed. There's a lot of R&D being done on them. And no matter how much time you have in the rain, when you get to these situations, it's always an experiment when yeah. the bike is continuously developing at such a rapid pace. No, there's no question. And that's exactly what they're doing. And uh, you can see there's Herfoss. He's up the road, Craig. But the teammates here are going to be in a battle pretty shortly. Kyle Wyman can't lose points. That's the biggest thing for the 33 right now is he doesn't want to lose any more points than are needed. So if he loses five points today to Herfoss, um, that would be all he wants to lose. But in order to do that, he's got to get up there and get behind his teammate. I mean, we're talking a difference of nine points. If he finishes third, Herfoss wins. It's a nine-point thing. And I think it's nine points coming in today, isn't mm -hmm. it, for the championship lead. So that jumps to 18 pretty quickly. These guys will be back at Brainerd, and obviously we got another race tomorrow. But uh, looking at the screen right now, Kyle Wyman is on his personal best lap time right now. As the conditions have gotten worse, he's actually gotten better. It's so interesting too, Jay, as you talk about the rain, and it looks like it's falling harder than it has. But in terms of like our vision from our booth looking out, it's probably the lightest it's been in the last three or four hours. Nah, it's 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 pelting, Greg. I can see it from but it on turns the track. Not, yeah. not, not, I'm talking about the light, the ambient yeah. light oh, itself. Oh, the ambient light it's itself. Bright. Yeah, it's pretty it's bright. bright. But, but yeah, you're right. It's it's that might be the case, but it is it's pounding down pretty hard. Yeah, it's and really uh, Kyle's really done a good job. He's closed this gap up to Raspoli, and um, you know, anytime you get these kind of conditions, they kind of become tests. And uh, you want to try to make your bike as good as you can. So they may have made some changes to the 33 between that challenge race and this race. And uh, looking at the lap times, 243 for Herfoss, 244.4 for Kyle Wyman. Oh, James is down, Greg. Big crash for James Raspoli. Ugh. Into the gravel trap that he goes. It looks like he's going to be up and OK. Oh, man. That was a big crash. He hit his head pretty good there on the left side. And again, that's those conditions. James had gone 246.6, so he was almost three seconds off of what Herfoss did. And Kyle Wyman got to see his teammate do that right in front of him. So it's going to be a big battle for third now between Flinders, O'Hara, Corey West, Bobby Fong, Jake Lewis. They're all kind of back there battling. This guy didn't care. He's just going to keep doing what he's doing and hope to see Oop, his little board. Wide yeah, a little wide. And you're going to see here, these are one of those weird crashes where he crashes to the opposite side of the corner that he's coming into. So the front wheel gets a, gets a little bit backed in. Now, right now, he's in no man's land. You can see, watch him hit his head here, Greg. I'm... He, at least he hit it on the grass. grass. You know, he hit it on the grass, but the visor's gone. Breaks through that drag specialties. Soft barrier there. And, um, you know, it's a, one thing we don't see this young man see do very often. We don't see James tip off very often. But you know what, Jay? It was almost like he knew the grass was coming, and he had to bail off the bike. Like, that yeah. was the weirdest thing. The bike went so sideways, and that paint stripe and the grass was coming, so Raspoli did it. Now, what happens in the uh, championship? Like hey, to look, see that. That Arai helmet did its job because yep. Raspoli looks looks like he's okay, and he's going to take advantage of the, the, the Yeti workers. cooler for the corner see workers. See what they got in there. But uh, it, it really, you look at Troy Herfoss right now, and, and he's doing what he needs to do, obviously, in this championship to maximize and, and extend his points lead. But for Kyle Wyman on the 33, after seeing what happened with Raspoli, I think Wyman's doing the right thing, Jay, because this is a race where if Wyman pushed too hard, even though he's nine points back in this championship, it's better to only lose five points than it is to lose a full 25 points. So for Kyle yeah, Wyman, you know, just getting around there, Jay, to your, and he's still three seconds slower than Herfoss is going. But he also knows he's got a 12-second gap. He's going to be, yeah. I'm not going to say he's going to be happy, but he'll be happy to only give up five points. I mean, right now there's no reason to stick it out and go after this guy because it is literally raining as hard as we have ever seen it here right now at Road America. And, Jay, there's a good battle going on behind these guys, oh, too. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. for a moment it was Max Flinders who was in fourth, Tyler O'Hara, who's teammates to the number 17. So white flag. white flag flies for Troy Horfoss. It looks like he's got about another two minutes and 45 seconds to navigate himself around this very tricky 
Road America circuit here in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. And there is the gap back to the 33 of Kyle Wyman. And then if you look back in that mist, I'm sure you're going to see this crazy battle for third place. They've been tied together. O'Hara's got a spot now. Max Flinders is there. Corey West, Jake Lewis. Bobby Fong was in that, so I'm not sure where he has gone, Greg. So Bobby Fong may have fallen back a little bit, but anytime old Max is in the hunt for a podium, it can get exciting. Bobby Fong did go past our commentary position here, so I did see him go through. The Saddleman guys would love to get up there and sneak out a podium, wouldn't they, Greg? Corey West and Jake Lewis as they go through turn three. It's a long lap around here and anything can happen, but I will tell you this, Jace, it's the last time we saw Mission King of the Baggers. This SNS Indian motorcycle team have done some significant testing. Uh -huh. And for Tyler O'Hara, he said they improved everything for him on the bike. Wow. They improved the braking, they improved the balance of the bike, they improved suspension setups, they improved engine braking. And it's making Tyler O'Hara even more comfortable. And right now for him, with a podium in sight for the number 29 we're talking about, teammate to the number 17 who we're looking at now, it's going to pay dividends for all the work that the SNS Indian team has put together. No, they've done a good job and they've got a great rider. I mean, kudos to Indian for going out and picking up Troy Herfoss. And, you know, we're also going to see him in the Hooligan uh, Championship as well. We'll see him next on that bike up at the Ridge. But uh, you get a good look at the team there. They've done a good job making him comfortable. And when you get a guy like this with so much experience who's used to winning and knows how to win his pedigree, of, of winning superbike championships and superbike races in Australia, and he's very well traveled. Um, you know, you're, the, the experience just shows, and uh, you know, this is what you get. You got a guy with a 10.7 second lead halfway through his last lap, or just about a quarter of a lap left. Yeah, and he's able to look around and see what's up. And by the way, Jake Lewis has gotten past Max Flinders and Corey West in fourth place as he tries to chase down Tyler O'Hara for that final podium spot. So for Tyler O'Hara, it's not definitely a done deal just yet. There was quite a gap, though, between the two. But for Troy Hervoss, this has been a storybook race. He hasn't put a wheel right. He had one where he was a little <laughs> bit off track. Just into turn five yeah, there, didn't he? Yeah, Just a yeah. little bit. I mean, who hasn't done that in these conditions? But what an impact he has had on the Mission King of the Baggers championship. Troy Herfoss has a good look around, and he's wondering where everybody is. And he is going to put his fist in the air as he comes up to start finish straight and takes the checkered flag and the win ahead of his championship rival, Kyle Wyman, and Wyman brings it home. A solid second oh, place, and here's man. that battle. Is Jake Lewis gonna get as they come over the top of the hill, and it's gonna be that close for the Saddleman racer, and Tyler O'Hara is gonna get him by just .3 of a second. Jake Lewis so close. What a charge for Jake there on the last lap. So what a rain rider he is. Yeah, when you he look had at an it, unbelievable result earlier today. He just went second. He just went second fastest lap of the race, Jake Lewis on the last lap. But all props to this guy, Troy Herfoss. Racing in Australia, racing in the United States. And he gets a victory by 5.2 seconds on definitely what was a parade last last half of the last lap. Over Troy Herfoss, we'll get to talk to him and find out how this rain race went for him here at Road America. Mission King of the Baggers coverage is brought to you by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. By Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. And by Drag Specialties, an industry leading distributor of aftermarket parts and accessories for Harley Davidson and custom V twin motorcycles. Continue coverage here on Moto America Live Plus from Road America. You see Tyler O'Hara there making his way over to his teammate, Troy Herfoss, to congratulate him on that victory. But for Tyler O'Hara, he's able to, to find a spot on the podium as well, Roger. Yeah, and a good ride for him talk, coming into him talking to him on the pre-show on Friday. They had a really good test a couple weeks ago at, at Mid-Ohio, and he's, he's been really fast this weekend and, and coming in here and getting that podium and, and really tricky conditions. Uh, man, you can just see how hard it's raining out there and these baggers. It's just amazing how fast they can go. But for, for Tyler O'Hara, uh, great day for Indian as well. First and uh, also third, two guys on the podium. 
And then Kyle Wyman able to make up some good points. You see Hayden Gillum there off the side of the racetrack. We saw on the siding lap he made that decision to pull off. He's not limping the way that I thought he was going to be. It looked like he was when he was moving that bike uh, back out of the way. But for whatever reason it was, he did not take the start of the race today. But still going over to congratulate Troy. That's pretty cool. Yeah, really good sportsmanship there for, for Hayden. And, you know, it's got to be tough having the, the number one plate and, you know, struggling a little bit this year and then having that crash this morning. And the challenge was kind of setting back for the day. But, man, what a ride about Troy here in the wet. I mean, his best lap is a 242.3. Kyle's best lap, 244.4, same as uh, James. I mean, a couple seconds quicker lap and just really solid for a guy that doesn't have a lot of time on the bagger in the wet. He's just, he's just been really impressive this year so far. And, uh, you know, we'll see uh, how the rest of the year shapes up. Yeah, certainly able to extend his points lead that he has over the rest of the field. It's his fourth win of the season. Just been so impressive and immersing himself here in the Moto America culture. We'll step away, send it back over to Greg and Jason for continued coverage here at Road America. Action from race one, Jason. Here you go, Greg. This is the start and really the 17. That's all you need to know. He just took off and went out in front. The 43 of James Raspoli did a really nice job of trying to keep it close. He would start to fall back into the clutches of his teammate as you see James get a little bit side. It was a scary moment for all of us here. James hits his head pretty hard on the grass. Thank goodness, Greg, to your point, that it was the grass that he hit and not the pavement. So we were able to see him up and okay as you see a reaction from his team. And then a little bit further back, this was the battle for third as it would turn into. And Jake Lewis, for some reason, all of a sudden just decides to go cork off the second fastest slap of the race and give Tyler O'Hara more than he wanted. But it was Herfoss who had come across the line with a huge gap. It says 5.2, it was a lot bigger than that because you can see how slow he came across the line. So at one moment he had 10 and a half seconds. Kyle Wyman ends up second and Tyler O'Hara makes it a second factory Indian on the podium. Mission King the Baggers coverage continues from Road America after this. As you watch Troy Herfoss making his way around to go over to the podium to celebrate. There are a couple of riders, Roger, that did not have the race that they were looking for. Start off with Rocco Landers. He lined up um, in that seventh position, but we saw at the start he was banging the tank, and then he was never able to really move up at all, and he was 13 seconds slower than the rest of the field. And yesterday he had a clutch issue, so I wonder if maybe that happened again today off the start there, because we've seen him as right as the start, seen him on the screen, mentioned it to you that he was being baiting on the uh, tank and was having an issue, so it could have been a clutch again. Travis Wyman, another rider uh, that did not have the race he needed as well, and we saw him miss that siding lap. He was waiting there to exit, but he never was able to exit pit lane and, and put in a lap. And him, another guy that had a crash this morning as well, so, uh, you know, it's really difficult when you have to rebuild a bike and then you don't get any track time. Some work to be done overnight before race two tomorrow. Let's go back and we'll celebrate with Greg, Jason, and Hannah. Mission King of the Baggers coverage is brought to you by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. By Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. And by Drag Specialties, an industry leading distributor of aftermarket parts and accessories for Harley Davidson and custom V twin motorcycles. It wouldn't be Wisconsin if we didn't get a little bit of rain. I mean, last year was really weird, but Trey Herfoss with a 5.2 second victory over Tyler O'Hare. Jake Lewis just behind him, Corey West, Max Flinders, Bobby Fong, Rocco Landers, and Raspoli, who ended up launching that thing down the road. Let's get down to Hannah, who's in winner's circle, who has a very happy Australian. Three victories in a row for Troy Herfrost. This one looked quite a bit different. Some crazy conditions out there, but you led that race from start to finish. What was it that allowed you to be so consistent on such a changing track? Hannah, I'm going to have to start questioning your dedication. I've just ridden around in the rain and on this big bike, and you're sitting here with an umbrella. Um, man, that was so, so wet. Like, um, yeah, my crew chief's back in Australia. He he messaged the guys and said, oh, uh, Jake Gagne just just mentioned puddles forming. And, um, geez, I'm glad, I, I'm glad he relayed that back to me because down the back section it was every lap um, spinning the tyre up and... I couldn't even see going down the straight. There was so much water, and I'm like, is that 0.7? Is that 0.7? Then the last time I looked, put my head, I'm like, 
oh, it's like seven seconds, and then I just completely froze up. And um, yeah, so happy for my team. Uh, SNS cycle, it's a big weekend for them, home race. Um, the Indian Challenge is working great. Jeez, there's so many guys to thank. Mission Foods, um, Parts Unlimited, Drag Specialty, uh, Progressive. And just all the fans for coming out and watching. I'm, I'm enjoying this so much, uh, even in the rain, so thank you. Congrats, Troy. Guys. What do you say, Jason? Yeah. I mean, that's that's it. <laughs> it's always more enjoyable when you're winning races, yeah. for sure. But yeah, it, it, they're very tricky conditions, obviously, and, and vision is a big deal even when you're out front. But let's get right back down to Hannah. Second place today for Kyle Wyman. Could you say, a, approaching this race with an abundance of caution, just knowing who's down the road from you out front? Yeah, 100%. I mean, just... Uh, I was actually pretty nervous going into this one. The conditions are just so freaking sketchy out there. And yeah, I just wanted to be patient and luckily it kind of came to me and man, James had a huge one in front of me. That was insane to watch. And uh, I really thought for a moment I was gonna run over his bike or something, but I'm just so glad he's okay. And uh, just gotta give it up to the whole Harley Davidson factory racing team and all the Harley Davidson fans out here this weekend for sticking it out in the rain. and. We got some for Troy tomorrow in the dry, so let's get him tomorrow. Congratulations to Kyle Wyman and rounding out your podium in third place, Tyler O'Hara. You had to keep them at bay behind you there. It got a little bit dicey, but you managed to pull off this podium. Tell us how you did it. Whew. Yeah, that was gnarly. That was uh, that took everything I had to bring it home. Man, the whole SNS team, everybody from SNS that's here, that's all the employees, everybody that supports us and really works hard behind the scenes. We really appreciate you. Uh, this Indian Motorcycle Factory team is amazing. I'm so proud to be on this team. Our partners, Progressive, Parts Unlimited, Drag Specialties, Mission Foods. All you amazing fans for sticking it out here in the rain. We appreciate you. We love you. Uh, man, that was that was awesome. Um, good to get some points. Uh, these guys were really getting after it those first couple laps. I got shuffled back there a little bit. and Man, I hope that makes for some good TV because that was gnarly. Congratulations, Tyler O'Hara, rounding out your Mission King of the Beggars podium, guys. Well, it certainly shows that these riders are superheroes especially with the things you got going on right there. So here is a look at the championship and how it's playing out right now. So her Foss with 160 points and Kyle Wyman just 14 back. And boy, he played that in a really smart way. What a race as the rain came down. Our coverage will continue here on Moto America Live Plus. And Roger, Troy said that his crew chief back from Australia is watching the coverage here on Live Plus, listened to Jake Gagne's interview, and then relayed the information back. Yeah, and that just shows you, you know, his crew chief chipping in and helping out and, you know, using all the tools in your toolbox and have, listening to other people. And I talk about a lot riders watching other sessions and things like that but his, his crew chief they won some some titles together and he's still helping him out even though he's over here stateside i love that it's just full support from all over the globe for troy herfoss and you can certainly see through the respect that the other riders have for him and just the way that they're, they're able to celebrate with him that he is not he and he said this back at daytona i'm not here just to race he said i really want to be a part of this paddock and i want to be uh, you know a member of, of the team and, and really soak everything in that is moto america and he has certainly done that yeah and also too you know i think honestly i believe troy would like to be in superbike one day um, so we'll see what happens, but it's great to have him here. Kyle showed his experience and smart today, uh, taking the points, not throwing it down the road, not having the, the pace that Troy had, and uh, he'll be ready. Tomorrow will be a different day. There's going to be a battle. Yeah, he did say yesterday, um, one of the things that Kyle said was that he just, he loves the pressure. He'll take all of the pressure, put it on him anytime, and he's ready for that challenge tomorrow. Let's go back over to Greg and Jason. Celebrations in the rain. It's gotten a lot chilly. So these riders are going to have to put those leathers on leather dryers over the course of the night. And hopefully they have extra gear as we expect a dry race. And so does Kyle Wyman. And we expect a much different race, but this one was definitely entertaining. We hope James Rispoli is going to be okay. For Hannah, Jason, I'm Greg. See ya.